celebration of life. And the one who knew, Sister Thelma Johnson, amen. You're here because of her love, amen. Now, if you knew her, I want you to put your hands together and celebrate. Come on, if you knew her. Come on, celebrate, amen. It's a celebration of life. Amen. And if you're sitting next to one, somebody, come on, tell them, you're so blessed to sit next to me. Come on, tell them. We're celebrating Thelma Johnson's life, amen. To all of the family, to the church family, amen. We're praying right now, amen, that the Lord continue to bless us and give us peace, amen. Our order of service, amen. We'll have a musical selection by Sister Louise Duncan and our scripture reading and prayer, amen. And Minister Johnson, amen. Oh, oh, oh. 
I will be reading to you scripture from both the Old and the New Testament. The Old Testament according to Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul, and he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will now read scripture from the New Testament, the gospel according to John. John chapter 1, 1 through 5, and it reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and with him was not anything made that was not made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come to celebrate a life that lived. And Lord, as we continue on this service, we ask that your Holy Spirit comfort. And we just thank you for being able to be a witness to your daughter's life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If I could help somebody as I travel along. And if I can cheer somebody with a word or song. And if I can show somebody that they are traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. Then my
Acknowledgement and Obituary. Amen. We'll be read by Sister Valora Calhoun. Acknowledgement. The family would like to thank each of you for your kind words, support, visits, cards, calls, emails, texts, prayers, attendance, and any other generosity that you have shown to them during this difficult time. Thank you. In loving memory of Sister Thelma Johnson, God's tomorrow is a day of gladness and its joys shall never fade. No more weeping, no more sense of sadness, no more foes to make afraid. God's tomorrow, every cloud will pass away. At that dawning of God's tomorrow will be a better day. Whereas God our Father has seen fit in his divine will to call our, be our dearly beloved home to eternal rest, the pastor along with the church family of the Greater New St. Matthew Missionary Baptist Church wish to express our heartfelt sympathy to Sister Ella McDaniel and the entire family of Sister Thelma Johnson. Amen. We are encouraged and consoled in the words of Jesus who said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Whereas Thelma, through powerful testimony of a Christian, demonstrated a life by having a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ through her faithfulness and servitude in the body of Christ and by demonstrating good Christian character. She was a regular active supporter and member of Harmony Missionary Baptist Church. She served in various capacities, especially in hospitality and serving others. Her radiant light so shined and touched all that knew her. To know her was to love her. Amen. We will miss her her smile, her love, and her presence. Our hearts bleed with sorrow, but are comforted knowing that the Lord will not put more on us than we can bear. She will be greatly missed, but never forgotten. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Whereas John 3, 16 reads, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Philippians 3, 20 and 21 reads, For our conversation is in heaven, from, him, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord, Jesus Christ, who shall change our bodies, that it may fashion like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Let it be resolved, we solemnly join you in submission to the will of our Father in the earthly departure of Thelma. We extend our Christian love and heartfelt sympathy to you, the bereaved family. A copy of the resolution will be given to the family, humbly submitted this ninth day of September in the year of our Lord, 2023. Bishop Lavester Adams, Senior Pastor, Sister Cheryl Williams, Church Assistant. Resolution, celebration of life for Thelma Johnson. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 14. Just as the scriptures remind us that to everything there is a time and season, to every purpose under the heaven, we join with you today to celebrate the life of our beloved sister in Christ, Thelma Johnson. Those who believe and love the Lord recognize that this life is filled with swift transitions. We know that we are pilgrims just traveling through on our way to reach our ultimate destination, our heavenly home. Sister Johnson had already purchased her ticket, and just a short time ago, it changed it for passage on the glory-bound train. All right. With all the adjectives in our English language to describe an individual's personality traits, their just are not enough to convey the beautiful soul of Sister Johnson. Her faithfulness, her kindness, yes. her love, yes. her compassion, Amen. her meekness, her gentleness, and her patience were abundantly shown to her spiritual and biological family. 
Whatever she volunteered to do, she did it out of love. Whereas the Almighty Father in his infinite wisdom has called our beloved member from the pains and trouble of this life to live with him forever, where there will be no sorrow, no grief or tears to engulf us. Whereas we, the Harmony Missionary Baptist Church family and pastor, do thank God that we have the opportunity to be in fellowship and friendship with Sister Johnson. Amen. Our memories, however, will live on in the hearts of not only her church family, but also in the hearts of her friends, loved ones, and family. Be it resolved that we do bow in humble submission and we do accept the unerring wisdom of God's will. Be assured that God is your strength and refuge during this time of bereavement. Resolve further that a copy of this resolution is given to the family and a copy be placed in the permanent records of harmony. Submitted this ninth day of September 2023, Dr. Harold T. Johnson, Sr., Pastor. Amen, amen. Thelma Johnson was born October 25th, 1939 in Homer, Louisiana, and raised with her eight siblings by loving parents, Caesar White and Lily B. White. She was raised in a loving Christian home and attended Union Grove CME Church, where she was baptized at an early age. Later, she united with Harmony Missionary Baptist Church in Los Angeles, California, under the leadership of Pastor Dr. Lloyd T. Johnson, Sr., now led by Pastor Dr. Harold T. Johnson. Thelma loved making people feel good sharing food from her kitchen and vegetables out of her garden. Her passion for food started in cooking class at Homer Colored High School in Homer, Louisiana. She developed another love while in high school. That's where she met Luther L. C. Johnson, the love of her life. In 1957, Thelma and L. C. moved to Los Angeles, California to pursue their dreams. They married in 1958 and soon after bought their first house. Thelma made that house a loving home and welcomed in her sister Mary Lou. Thelma worked as a homemaker her entire life. When son Roderick was born, Thelma beamed with joy. Then upon the arrival of granddaughter Michelet, love and joy were everywhere. Thelma especially enjoyed working as a teacher's aide at Perch Avenue Elementary School while Michelet was a student at the school. Thelma's joy was complete upon the arrival of little Miley. Thelma was happiest in the kitchen fixing food for family and friends. Thanksgiving Day was the high point of every year. Her sister, Ella B. McDaniel, would be the first to arrive and the last to leave. Thelma let her niece, Tracy Hayes, and nephew Lloyd Cotton help in the kitchen, but only under the watchful eye. Thelma made so much food and so many cakes and pies, she could feed an army and fill the Cotton's Tupperware. Thelma had four other pleasures, sewing on her Singer sewing machine, watching soap operas on TV, hanging with friends, especially Patsy Mack, Sherry Webb and Juanita Johnson, and fourth, she loved her Harmony Missionary Baptist Church family. The sister bonds and brother bonds of Harmony brought extra joy to her life, including the time spent with special daughters and special son, Manuel Aguilar. Amen. Thelma would say that Pastor Lloyd T. Johnson and the church family provided her all the church I need. Thelma was preceded in death by her husband, L.C., her parents, Caesar and Lily White, her sister, Bernice Nelmas, Essie Martin, Effie Dixon, Mary Lou White, and her brothers, Willie D. White, Claude Baker White, and Cecil Toddy White, and her niece, Glenda Dixon Williams. Thelma, a well-lived life, and a woman well loved. Thelma leaves to cherish her precious memories, her beloved Roderick White, Mary L., Michelet White, her mother Sherry Williams, and brothers 
Christopher Williams and Darion Nunn, Miley White Walker, her praying sister Ella B. McDaniel, sister-in-law Juanita Johnson, her spiritual sister Idiana Law, and a host of loving nieces, nephews, great nieces, and great nephews. Her loving God children, Dexter Mack, Tracy Hayes, Lloyd Cotton Jr., and Maisha Brown, and all others who touched her life in a special way. She loved you all. Come on, celebrate, amen. <laughs> Special remarks now, amen, family. I think it first began when I learned how good Thelma could cook. And I wanted her to make me 25 pancakes. And she said, I'll make them, but you gotta eat them. I wasn't very old, but I thought the way she reacted, I better rethink this thing. So I thought they were gonna be little McDonald's pancakes. There was no McDonald's pancakes. Delma's pancakes. So I said, okay, 10. I want 10 pancakes. She said, okay, I'll make them, but you gotta eat them. Okay. She made them, I ate two. <laughs> I tried to negotiate my way out. There was no negotiating, you had to eat. She made me eat till I almost threw them back up. <laughs> I realized this woman had a devilish side. So I said, okay. <laughs> she was babysitting us one time. And my mom came home and Thelma was out on the porch. Yeah. Kneeling down at the front door, begging me and my brother to open the door because I had locked her out. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that side again when LC was here. Because see, LC used to scare me. He used to jingle a change in his pocket. I used to run. Oh, I was scared. He jingled that chain. Then he had this mantra, a little boy named Toothpick. And I would look at Thelma's eyes every time LC said Toothpick was going to get me. I, oh, I was scared. Until one day I was playing outside. And I heard somebody yelling for Toothpick. Toothpick, come in the house. Toothpick. Toothpick was about this big. I was this big. The gig was up. I was in the house, Elsie came in, jiggling his change. I just looked at it. He said, uh-oh. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell Toothpick. I said, get him. Uh-oh, Thelma looked over at us. She said, you're in trouble, Elsie. <laughs> I walked out of the house, turned on the water hose. Elsie had just finished waxing his car. I had a devil side too. <laughs> Thelma was kind of like my second mom. I was the oldest, and coming along, she basically helped raise me. So I thought, you know what? I got an A mom and a B mom. She was my A mom. Ella was my B mom. Ella B. Ah, <laughs> uh, Mr. Cotton said what I was going to say, but I'm going to add to it. Thelma and I grew up. I see the way you say she started cooking. Nope. She started cooking in the playhouse. We made dirt, dirt cakes <laughs> and dirt pies. And you know, I could never could make the layer cakes out of dirt, but she could. She tried to teach me, but I couldn't get it. <laughs> and we made those dirt cakes. And then when she went to Homer Colored High School, home economic class, I called our teacher who was still living. The other day, I said, how would you describe Thelma in the kitchen? She said, top. <laughs> she was one of my top students. I said, okay. Thanksgiving Day. Oh, my God. It was her house for many, many, many years. I had Christmas Day, but I stopped some years ago. But she never stopped. And last Christmas, when I saw her health begin to fail, she had my daughter, Tracy, over to her house cooking. She was a supervisor, 
<laughs> and last year, Teresa had to go to the store. So I was left there. She said, Ella, could you check the dressing in the oven? I said, sure. I got up to check the dressing. What happened? Here she come with the walk. <laughs> to the oven door. Do you think you can do it? I said, if you move out of the way, I can. <laughs> you think she did? Nope. <laughs> she did not move out of the way. She got that pan out of that up. <laughs> oh, Manuel Aguilar. That's one. Every time she came this way, he had some food. She didn't come this way, I had to bring it. <laughs> Somebody. And I want to say to the Harmony family, thank you. Amen. And to her high school classmates, some of you, they sent a fly book from her high school classmates. And Lord and Hewitt, whoever they are, cotton. <laughs> <laughs> When he said that day when he came home and she was locked out the house, I said, what you doing outside the house? I'm locked out. I can't get in. I'm begging and I'm begging them to let me in. I got in the house with my belt. They in the back bedroom. <laughs> Up under the cover. I don't know what happened. I said, I don't, I'm not going to ask him what happened, but I'll tell you what his belt's going to do. <laughs> I don't, I don't think they locked her out anymore. And Thelma came to California, she came to my house. She and I was close. I was thinking this morning, I don't think we ever had an argument. Didn't always agree, but never, I can't remember any time we had an argument. She came here from Louisiana, she brought my niece, Glenda Williams, Cut Dixon, and Billy. Well, Billy, you and I, who is all these people sitting over here? Do you know y'all? <laughs> but she came to my house and she got up that morning and she wasn't married then her husband was L.C. called you know how I act silly I, he called I gave her the phone and she, she didn't know how to turn the phone from loser she, hello hello I said I think if you turn it around you could help <laughs> And they got married at my house. And they lived there and they lived with the other. Like I said, I never even disagreed, but never an argument. I can't ever remember an, an argument. Eight or some years. Yes, something. Family? I guess y'all my family. Ooh. <laughs> I will see for the day. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. So to the uh, Harmony Baptist Missionary folks here that are here, to uh, family and friends, to seen pastors, and Reverend, my name is Dexter Mack. I am one of Thelma's godchildren. Uh, with me today are her three other godchildren. You want to stand up, Lloyd? Lloyd Cotton Jr. Tracy, Maisha, y'all want to stand up? So I am here today representing a consortium of my God siblings, I just want y'all to stand and be recognized. Because 62 years ago, my parents had this question that Thelma and Elsie were the solution to. And then in various different years, their parents had the same question, which is, if I'm not able to raise this child, who do I trust has the values and the principles right. to raise this child for me? And for our parents, that was Elsie and Thelma Johnson. Now, I'm going to talk about my godmother, but i got to be honest with you. You can't talk about my godmother without really giving a little bit of props to my godfather. Right? To Lloyd's point, he had all of us scared for various reasons. <laughs> so just by a show of hands, if you've ever had anybody threaten to cut your ears off, raise your hand. <laughs> so as you can see, it's cross-generational. He was threatening people for a long time. <laughs> but Thelma and LC were a yin and a yang situation. They were peanut butter and jelly. As Thelma was as down to earth and gracious, compassionate, empathetic as you could be, right? My godfather loved to have fun. And I used to love, once I figured it was going to cut my ears off, I used to love to watch him meet new kids because 
he would just terrify these kids. <laughs> so the story I, we talked about, my God siblings talked about, is we want to focus on a couple of values of Thelma, right? I think I've already mentioned the fact that she just had this unbounding generosity. And when we talk about her being a great cook and sewing and doing things for people, it had to come from somewhere. It came from her generosity. But more importantly with Thelma, she had this ability and wisdom to give folks grace on their indiscretions. I've never seen her hold any of people's indiscretions against them. And as her godson, I had a whole, whole lot of them. I remember once Thelma picked me up. I don't know where my mother, I don't know if she was gone that day. Thelma picked me up from school. I was so little back then, they used to pin your report card on your shirt. I don't know if y'all remember that. So Thelma picks me up, and she looks at this report card, and you know, man, I don't know how we did this, but some way I ended up with two college degrees, but if you go back to that day she picked me up and saw that report card, it was nothing but C's and D's. So she takes me to the house, and the first thing my God father says is, Boy, you must just go to school just to eat your lunch. <laughs> but Thelma said to me, she said, listen, your grades are reflective of the energy and effort you're putting into each subject. And she showed me that grace. The way she came at me, I didn't feel shame like I, I felt a little bit earlier in the day when they pinned that thing to me. Because Thelma was always doing that kind of thing. And I think it talks about the kind of person she was. So for me, I had so many different indiscretions that I looked at my godmother and I saw how she treated me. One of the, I'll never forget, and you guys, and I think Lloyd talked about it. Look, Thelma was no pushover. She was no pushover. Thelma had rules in her house. So the first rule, and you, Jay Russell, you tell me if I'm right or wrong. First thing is, you don't enter through Thelma's front door. If you're a kid, where do you go? I was almost 42 years old before I actually went through Thelma's front door. <laughs> The second was that if you look at Thelma Refrigerator, and she was generous, any Safeway soda pops you want, you can get. But there were three items in that refrigerator you better not touch. One was her Welch's grape juice. Am I right? Yeah. Second was her Martini, uh, not Mar no, uh, Martinelli apple juice. And then she had bottles of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> so the best way to demonstrate the kind of person that my godmother was, was to tell you about an incident where at one point, I tell you, that Welch's grape juice was calling my name. <laughs> so I decided I'm going to steal one of these grape juice, go out to her garage, and once I get out there, I'm going to drink it, and I'm finally going to taste this Welch's grape juice. So I had enough sense to figure out how to get it out and heist it out to the garage. But in the 1960s, they didn't have twist-off bottles. What, what did they have? If you want to open a bottle, I forgot to take a bottle opener with me out there. <laughs> so now I got this bottle, and I'm trying to figure out what I do with it. And I look through the, if you guys remember, you can look through the garage door. You can see the kitchen. The film is back in the kitchen. I know I can't bring it back, so what do I do? I decide to hide this bottle, and I'm going to come back and probably put it back. I go out. I start playing with some neighborhood friends. Maybe an hour and a half later, I come in the house, and Thelma says, as soon as I walk in, she goes, wash your hands and go sit down at the dining room table. I don't know what's going on. I forgot. My kid brain, I forgot about it. I stole the Welch's drink. <laughs> Thelma sits down with me at the table, a cup for me, a glass for her, and all of a sudden, this bottle that I pilfered from the refrigerator appears on the table. <laughs> she pours about a third of the, of the contents in my cup, and she takes the rest. And here's the amazing thing about my God. She didn't say one word to me. She sit on that grape jet. She never said a word. She never said, where did you get it? How did it get out there? She knew exactly how all that had happened. But that was the grace that my godmother extended to us, all of us. She never let our own indiscretions held it against us. So I was talking about a little report card earlier, and I was thinking about on August 27th when my eyes sister called me and said, Thelma had passed. I thought, you know what? My godmother pinned to her wings right now. It's her eternal report card. And on that report card is A's. A for being the best wife. A for being the best man. A for being the best godmother. A for being one of the best people. So 
I want to end by a poem that, that Tracy wanted me to read. It's called God's Garden. I got to find my glasses because my eyes are a little watery now. God looked around his garden and he found an empty place. And then, then he looked down on earth and he saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and lifted you to rest. God's gardens most, must be beautiful. He always takes the best. He knew that you were suffering. He knew that you were in pain. He knew that you would never, ever get well again. He saw the road was getting rough and the heels were hard to climb. So he closed your weary eyelids and whispered, peace be thine. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you didn't go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. Thank you. Amen. Most of you know me, some of you don't. Um, that little brother that Lloyd got in trouble with. <laughs> Aunt Thelma was the hand that rocked the cradle. The hand that rocked I was only two years old when she started to rock my cradle. At that age, I had no sense of time. I would be crying and showing out, even between the times of 10 o'clock in the morning and 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That's when Thelma's stories were on, her soap operas. Even my tears couldn't mess with her watching Search for Tomorrow. So she rocked me right to sleep. That's when the rocking began. And I'm not alone, as you've heard. Some of you on this front row remember when Thelma rocked your cradle, too. See, I'm not just talking about a physical baby cradle. Your cradle was your situation. Your cradle was your problems. Your cradle was your pain. Whatever had you caught up and in need of a friend, that was your cradle. You were in a cradle when you needed food to eat when you needed shelter, when you needed a way out of a bad relationship, when you were mad at somebody because somebody was mad at you, that was your situation. That was your cradle. Even when your good man was not so good, you had a situation, and that was your cradle. <coughs> Thelma was there to rock your cradle. So I'm not just talking to these folks. I'm talking to all of you. She rocked the cradle for. And just by a show of hands, if you would, just let me know if she rocked your cradle. Amen. Amen. I think we're coming close to a full house. And that's your testimony today. You testified. Let me share. Uh, testimony from my cousin, Princess Powell. She said, years ago, Princess had announced to the family that she was going to be hosting Thanksgiving dinner and cooking. Now, we all know that Thelma was the queen of Thanksgiving. Amen. But Thelma did not get bent out of shape. Right? She didn't give her no side eye. We just looked at it and said, all right. So come Thanksgiving Day, Princess is at her house, and she's freaking out because the food didn't look the way Thelma made food look. And it didn't taste the way Thelma made food taste. And my little cousin is in a complete panic for what to do. And she hears this knock on the door opens the front door and what does she see? 
Aunt Thelma pulling out the boxes. <laughs> Turkey, dressing, chicken and pies. Thelma to the rescue. Oh yeah, that's how she rocked your cradle when you were at your lowest. And I remember running to Thelma with problems on top of problems. She rocked my cradle every time. I would come screaming about how somebody done me wrong. And as I think about it, her advice was always the same. I come in and I'm huffing and puffing. She would say, well, and she'd wait, and she'd wait. And she'd watch that huffing and puffing just disappear. She was rocking my cradle. In that silence, in that waiting, she was giving me space to be myself and to come to myself. Then I declared to her how I was going to solve the problem. She would look up with more of that Thelma wisdom. She'd say, well, OK. And she was done. She took great pride in having rocked my cradle. And all of you, all of you, it's with the hands raised. Think about how she rocked your cradle. Remember back to those situations, how she got you through hard times, took you to the garden, and picked collard greens. How she fixed your torn clothes on her singer sewing machine. Or fed your hungry body right here in the Harmony Missionary Baptist Church kitchen. Think about all that. She fed people when they were too ashamed to admit they were hungry. That's how she rocked our cradle. So when you remember Thelma, remember the old saying, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And that's how, in her small way, she ruled our world. May the Lord rock her cradle. I'm Charles Stokes, LC. Take my guy, look like they all see a little bit, they told me. I'm the last of the siblings. Uh, my mother was the second oldest of, of the siblings, and uh, I'm next to the last LC sibling. Uh, I'm retired United States Army. I drove 2,000 miles to get here. And by myself in that Cadillac. It took me two, two and a half days almost. But I'm bringing my love from Homer, Louisiana. This is the Butler from the beginning and the end. I want to thank you all. Uh, I'm not much of a speaker, but I'm in the military. I had to speak all the time. But I, you know, but I just want to bring the love and prayers to you guys from Louisiana, one to get in that. And thank you all so much for loving Aunt Thelma. That was my baby. That food, well, I had to trim down a little bit getting here because I used to be heavy too. She was a great woman. When I was in the military, I would call her when I had doubt. And she would always say, Well, you in, you might well finish. And she left it like that. And Elsie was the same way. That was my buddy. I love it. And thank y'all so much for taking care of her. Thank you. I can't say enough. I just want to thank you too, guys. All of you guys. And I'm bringing all the love from home of Louisiana to you guys to say thank you. And God bless all of you. One thing I can say. You might can't, you might can't understand me right now because I'm hurt. That woman right here. 
my favorite auntie and my mama to me. I can call this woman at 3 o'clock in the morning, and she would talk to me and wouldn't worry about what I had to say. She would listen to me. The things that she did for me, like y'all been talking about, she helped every last one of us in this house. She raised us as her own. She gave us nothing but love. And every time I came down to see her, and miss you tell you, I had my coffee sitting there in my five pound bag of sugar. And she said, you're gonna be a diabetic one day, boy. <laughs> but I kept on pushing. I kept on pushing. She taught me a lot of things about the kitchen. I sat in that chair and sat there and watched her make cakes, cookies. And I do it myself today. I love to cook. Cause she taught me how to do it. I don't care what I did when I was a kid, she had my backs. How bad with all of us was, she still had our backs. She never put nobody down. She gave nothing but love. And right today, she's still giving our love. Nothing but love. My auntie's gonna be missed, and I miss the deal. I missed my last Sunday phone call. She Brian called me and told me. Ooh. Come on, celebrate, amen. What a life. What do you do when you've done all you can? Seem like it's never enough. Oh, oh, oh. What can you say when your friends turn away and you all alone? Tell me, what do you give? When you're given your all And it seemed like You can't make it through Child, you just stand When there's nothing else to do Stand Watch the Lord see you through After you've done All you can You just stand Tell me, how can you handle the guilt of the past? Tell me, how can you deal with the shame? And how can you smile when your heart has been broken and feel with pain, filled with pain? Tell me, what do you give? When you're given your all And it seemed like You can't make it through Well you just stand When there's nothing else to do Stand And watch the Lord see you through After you're done All you can You just stand and be sure, be not entangled in the bondage of envy. You just stand and endure. God has a purpose. God, God has a plan. Tell me, what do you do when you've done all you can? And it seems like. You can't make it through Well, you just stand You just stand You, oh, oh You just stand Stand to the storm Stand to the rain Oh, stand to the hurt Stand to the pain Hold on just be strong. Oh, God's on his way. Oh, and he 
won't be long After you've done all you can After you've done all you can After you've done all you can Ella, you just stand there Thelma Johnson is loved by her church family. Amen. This is demonstrated by Sister Linda Bryce and Sister Diane Davis who roll out round tables and set up chairs, and who help Sister Molly Dancy on her birthday unload Nellie Alexander's truck, which was loaded with everything you see that's set up. Demonstrated by Pastor Emeritus who drove himself to the mortuary yesterday and had prayer with the family who's in dialysis right now as we speak. While Minister Johnson got off from work, came by to lock up the church to make sure that everything was secured. It's demonstrated by Deacon Haskell who drove 75 miles this morning to make sure that the church was open at 7 o'clock, amen, for Sister Dancy and Sister Alexander again, amen, to unload, amen, to prepare for the repass next door, amen. That's because uh, the church family, and this is the church family that Sister Thelma Johnson loved. And I'm blessed and proud to pastor this great church family, amen. Sister Thelma Johnson adopted Laura and I with open arms as pastor-elect in January 2014. Sister Thelma supported my visions and efforts from, every, from the very beginning. Even before my installation service, I organized the Gospel King singing group and recorded and released YouTube videos and the greater evergreen Baptist Church Mail Chorus of Las Vegas invited us, and we invited them back. And I said, Sister Thelma Johnson, I want to have a reception, amen, after the concert, amen. What a buffet it was, amen. I think Evergreen's Mail Chorus travels all the way from Las Vegas just to enjoy Sister Thelma Johnson's kitchen cuisine, amen. Also in July 2024, on the day of my pastoral installation day, Sister Johnson accepted the position as the president of the pastor aid committee. I didn't know, I've never had one before, amen, but she's, amen, she stepped up, amen, she saved the day, amen. In that same month, the Lord gave me a vision for the Harmony Bible Institute Theological Seminary, and we just celebrated nine years had our annual conference uh, in Palm Spring last week. The very beginning of HBI, Sister Thelma Johnson volunteered to help the vision of HBI. We started classes in the evening and we had a 15 minute break. Some of the brothers and sisters, amen, they just got off from work, amen. But Sister Thelma Johnson would serve them something hot and those 15 minutes, amen, we would conduct a class here and, and have uh, and eat in the overflow, amen, and that became, we call that now the South Campus, amen, and, and Sister Thelma Johnson was in charge of the South Campus, amen. She was already serving breakfast for the Sunday school, amen, amen, and she, she never forgot uh, my birthday, or Sister Johnson's birthday, or celebrate every important day she was there. And what I love most about Sister Thelma Johnson, when she agreed with me, it was 100%. And when she disagreed with me, she was 200% <laughs> on my case, amen. Right. And I'm paraphrasing that, amen. She loved her pastor, and her pastor loved her. You know, you live your eulogy. The life you live, that's your eulogy. The psalmist said that we live our life as a tale being told. All 
Huh? All I have for you today, family, is the word of God. Amen. Uh, Mark 4 and 35 says that the same day when the evening came, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. And when they had sent the crowd away, they took him in the boat just as he was. And there were also little boats with him, and suddenly a wind storm arose, and the waves splashed into the boat. I want to use for a thought. All of a sudden, the unexpected. All of a sudden, the unexpected. We know this scripture. We grew up with this scripture. How many times did we sing Reverend James Cleveland, Peace Be Still? Yeah. We know this scripture. All of a sudden, the unexpected. Sister Thelma Johnson had been battling with her health for quite some time. We already knew this. Sister Thelma fought a good fight. And she kept the faith. Amen. And all of a sudden, when, when reality hits, I'm talking about all of a sudden reality that takes place in our lives when loved ones leaves us to be with the Lord. We're not expecting to deal with reality just now, but we're not ready. Not now. We, we still got future plans. We're still planning on doing certain things. How do you deal with the all of a sudden and the unexpected? I mean, your day started off one way and ended up another way. Mark 4 and 35 says, that same day, all of a sudden, the unexpected happened. You see, everybody's not equipped to deal with the all of a sudden. We fall apart and we, we panic. We just lose it. And verse 37 says, and suddenly a windstorm rose and the waves splashed into the boat so that now it was filling the boat. You know, it's one thing when the boat is in the water, but another thing when the water is in the boat, amen? <laughs> there are some things that we need to know about the sudden. There's no guarantee against all of a sudden. Nobody is exempt from the all of a sudden. First of all, we are reminded that although the sovereign of the universe, Jesus, is on board and there's no guarantee against all of a sudden. And in this case, a sudden storm. Sunday, August 27th, about 3 o'clock, I just came out of a meeting at Calvary Baptist Church. Good move, we had a great meeting, a great turnout. I wasn't expecting missionary Sister Ella McDaniel's telephone call. I wasn't expecting to hear what she had to tell me. You see, nobody is exempt from the all of a sudden, the unexpected. I know we think because we are followers of Jesus that huh, we are protected from troubles and of this life, amen? Our children will be successful. Sickness will never come our way. Financial adventures will always succeed, and disappointments will never knock at our door. But the men of God in the Bible, amen, who knew who served the God in the scriptures, they had a different story. Joseph went to prison. Job lost everything he had but his life. Jeremiah was put in prison. However, Jesus did promise that I am with you. The sudden and the unexpected. You know, it may be tough to be in a storm with Jesus, but imagine being in the storm without him. Can I get a witness? Remember the songwriter says, when the storms of life are raging. He didn't write if the storms. No, no, he says, when the storms of life are raging, Lord, stand by me. In life, things come at us and we can't control it. Some things come out of the action from other people and some things in life are never explained. The, all of a sudden, the unexpected storm in our text, the disciples 
panic. You know, God, and it's, it seemed it's in this text that God seemed to be silent when we are in need of a word. Like these hardy fishermen, we protest the seeming inaction of Jesus when it seemed that Jesus is asleep at the wheel. And if we're not careful, fear replaces our faith. We'll be responding like Jesus' disciples. Their fear from the sudden and the unexpected made them panic. But we are people of faith. Can I get a witness? Don't panic. Don't lose it because Jesus hears our cries. Huh? And we ought to remember that although Jesus wasn't awakened by the storm, he wasn't awakened by the howling winds or the rocking of the boat, not even the water splashing in the boat. Jesus woke up because he heard the cries of his disciples. He'll hear your feeble cry and he'll answer by and by. Just like a mother hears the cries of her baby, just like a shepherd hears the bleak of his sheep, so does Jesus hear our feeble cries and he'll answer by and by. God works through the storms of our lives in order to bring us to his will. So we stand on the assurance. Isaiah 43 and 1 says that fear not for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine and when you pass through the waters I will be with you and when you pass through the rivers I will not let them sweep you over. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One, your Savior. God is in control of all of a sudden and the unexpected. And while we're going through all of this, all of a sudden, God says, peace. You know, Jesus sent two disciples into Bethany. And he says, you know what, when you get there, you're going to find a colt tied to the fence. I want you to untie it. And if anybody asks you, you tell them that the master said, I have need of him, so I want you to bring him straight to me. Well, a few days ago, Jesus sent two angels to Harbor General Hospital. It says when you get there, you'll find Thelma Johnson tied to a bed in ICU. A bed of sickness. And what I want you to do is to untie her. And if Ella and Huey and Lord and Dexter and Roderick and Michelet and Miley and Tracy ask you why you untied it, you tell her the master said I have need for her and bring her straight to me. Jesus said to them, a peace. Honey, come on home to glory. Sister Ellen McDaniel called me. She says, Pastor, Thelma left us. I responded, I know she's with the Lord. I have no doubt that she's with the Lord right now. Sister Ella McDaniel says, I believe she is too. I know she is. Can I get a witness? Amen. Does anybody know Jesus? Right. Is there anybody here know him? Yeah. Well, listen, he'll give you peace in the midst of the storm. Yeah. Family, be at peace. How many times have Jesus stood up in the storms of your life and said, peace? Peace, heartaches. Peace, sickness. Peace, trouble and worries. Pain and sorrow, disappointments and setbacks, bad news, sleepless nights, depression and regrets. How many times have Jesus said peace? So when you go through the peace, and when you go through the all of a sudden and the unexpected, Jesus says peace. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, as we honor and celebrate the life of our dear beloved sister Thelma Johnson, we pray that you continue to comfort this family, comfort all of us right now, strengthen us right now in the name of Jesus.
Somebody needs to be renewed and revived and restored right now. Our hearts are heavy, but we're not without hope. We have not forgotten that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Weeping may endure for a night. Oh, but joy cometh in the morning. And Lord, we thank you for all who have come today to give support and encouragement. Amen. And Lord, we speak to our hearts right now. and Let us remember the life of Sister Thelma Johnson. With celebration and may her legacy be remembered and honored for generations to come. May your everlasting love and holy power hold this family together. In Jesus' name I pray. Let the saints say together. Amen. Amen. Amen.